The topic of the missing 6,000 years of history is a controversial and intriguing subject that has been explored by researchers, scholars and historians for many years. This period of history is thought to exist between the great flood myths from various cultures such as the Sumerian, Babylonian, Egyptian and Biblical accounts and the emergence of ancient civilizations like the Sumerians and Egyptians. Theories about this missing period of history range from the possibility of advanced ancient technology and knowledge that has since been lost to the idea of a spiritual decline and reset for humanity. This video will take a closer look at these theories, exploring the evidence and ideas put forth by researchers in this field and examining the potential impact of this missing period of history on our understanding of the past. The flood myths from various ancient cultures are one of the most well-known and studied aspects of this missing period of history. These myths, which describe a catastrophic global flood that wipes out the majority of humanity, are present in cultures all over the world, from the Sumerians and ancient Egyptians to the Babylonians, Greeks and Biblical accounts. The similarities between these flood myths are striking, with many of them sharing similar themes and motifs. One of the most notable similarities between the flood myths is the presence of a righteous and virtuous protagonist who is chosen by the gods to survive the flood and rebuild humanity. In the Sumerian version, it's Yusudra, in the Babylonian Atrahasis, in the Bible is Noah, and in the Greek version, it's Deucalion. This character is often warned of the impending flood by the guards and instructed to build a large boat or ark to save a select group of animals and humans. Another similarity between the flood myths is the idea of a divine punishment for humanity's sins. In many of these myths, the flood is seen as a punishment for humanity's wickedness and disregard for the guards. The guards decide to wipe out humanity and start over with a new, purer generation. It is also noteworthy that many of these myths describe the Flood as a massive and destructive event that covers the entire Earth. This corresponds to the scientific understanding of a global Flood in the past caused by the melting of glaciers after the last Ice Age, which caused sea levels to rise and flood large areas of land. For example, the Biblical account of the Flood places a greater emphasis on God's wrath and the need for repentance while the Sumerian version focuses more on the technical aspects of building the Ark. These variations suggest that these myths may have been influenced by the cultural and societal context in which they were created. The concept of a spiritual decline and reset is reflected in the mythologies and belief systems of various ancient cultures. This idea of a spiritual decline and reset is also reflected in the religious beliefs and practices of ancient cultures. Many ancient cultures believe that humanity had once been in a state of harmony with the gods, but over time had become corrupted and fallen away from this state of grace. This decline was often attributed to human pride and arrogance and was seen as a punishment from the gods. One theory is that this decline could have been caused by a shift in human consciousness rather than a physical event. Some researchers suggest that ancient cultures may have had a different understanding of the world and their place in it, and that this change in perception led to a shift in their spiritual beliefs and practices. Additionally, the ancients viewed the equinoxes as important markers of time as they represented the balance of light and dark, life and death, and may have seen the declining of the world as a reflection of the spiritual balance being lost. It's important to note that while some of these theories and speculations have been proposed by researchers, they are still debated and not widely accepted by mainstream historians and scholars. However, they provide an interesting perspective on how ancient cultures perceive the world and their place in it, and add depth to our understanding of the missing 6,000 years of history. The story of Atlantis, as described by the Greek philosopher Plato, is one of the most intriguing and mysterious aspects of this missing period of history. According to Plato, Atlantis was a powerful and advanced civilization that existed in the distant past 
and ultimately met its downfall due to its own hubris and moral decay. Many researchers and historians have suggested that the story of Atlantis may have been based on an actual ancient civilization that existed before the Sumerians and ancient Egyptians. The idea is that Atlantis was a pocket of an advanced civilization that existed during this missing period of history and that its story has been passed down through the ages and eventually recorded by Plato. It's not uncommon for advanced civilizations to be found in pockets around the world. For example, the Indus Valley civilization in present-day Pakistan and northwestern India that flourished around 2600 to 1900 BCE was a highly developed urban civilization with advanced technology such as an extensive system of underground drainage and complex city planning, yet it remained relatively unknown until the war. There are many other examples of ancient cultures that were able to develop advanced technology and knowledge but were ultimately lost to history. There are several pieces of evidence that support the idea that Atlantis was an actual civilization. For example, Plato describes Atlantis as having highly advanced technology and architecture, including a network of canals and a complex system of dams. He also mentions that Atlantis was located beyond the Pillars of Hercules, which is believed to be the Strait of Gibraltar. This location corresponds to the ancient city of Tatesos, which is known to have existed in the area and was a center of trade and commerce. Another piece of evidence comes from ancient maps that show the Atlantic Ocean being explored before the Age of Discovery. The Piri Rise Map which is believed to have been created in the 16th century, shows an accurate representation of the coast of Antarctica, which was not discovered until the 20th century. Some researchers have suggested that this map may have been based on older maps that were created by ancient mariners who had visited Antarctica, and that this is evidence of an ancient civilization that existed before the Sumerians and ancient Egyptians. Of course, there is also some skepticism about the story of Atlantis, and some researchers argue that it is purely a work of fiction. But whether or not Atlantis was a real civilization, the story of its rise and fall is a fascinating and thought-provoking story that continues to captivate the imaginations of people around the world. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence for the existence of advanced ancient civilizations is the presence of megalithic structures such as Stonehenge and the pyramids of Egypt. These structures are massive and complex and would have required a high level of engineering and architectural knowledge to construct. Additionally, artifacts such as sophisticated tools and weapons have been discovered that indicate a high level of technological advancement. For example, the Antikythera mechanism, an ancient Greek analog computer, was used to predict astronomical positions and eclipses for calendrical and astrological purposes. It has been dated back to 150, 100 BCE and is considered as one of the earliest known complex mechanical device. Furthermore, many ancient cultures had complex systems of writing and mathematics, such as the Sumerian cuneiform script and the hieroglyphics of the ancient Egyptians. These systems would have required a high level of intelligence and education to develop end use. It's important to note that it's not that these civilizations were advanced compared to us today, but they were advanced in the sense that most other humans around them were hunter-gatherers and simple people, while they stood out for being able to do things that would not be attributed to the majority of hunter-gatherers. For example, the ancient Egyptians were able to build the pyramids, which is still a mystery to us today, not only for their engineering, but also for how they moved the huge stones. It's also worth noting that these advanced ancient civilizations were not isolated. They had trade and cultural exchange with other ancient cultures. For example, the ancient Sumerians had trade routes with the Indus Valley civilization and the ancient Egyptians had trade with the Minones and Phoenicians. There are several possible reasons why the period of history between the flood myths and the origins of the Sumerians and ancient Egyptians has been largely ignored or overlooked by mainstream historians. One of the main reasons is the lack of written records from this time period. 
Many ancient civilizations, such as those that existed before the Sumerians and ancient Egyptians, did not have a system of writing and therefore left no written records of their existence. This makes it difficult for historians to study and understand these civilizations. Another reason is that many ancient civilizations were destroyed or lost to time. Many ancient cities and structures have been destroyed by natural disasters such as earthquakes and floods or by human activities such as war and looting. Additionally, it's worth mentioning that there has been a traditional bias in the academic field where ancient history was mainly studied by European scholars who had the resources to do so and therefore their focus was mainly on Europe and the Mediterranean, not on other parts of the world. This has led to a Eurocentric approach to ancient history. Furthermore, there is also a lack of interest in the topic among historians who are more interested in studying more recent periods of history such as the Renaissance and the Industrial Revolution rather than the ancient world. The equinox is the moment when the sun is directly above the equator and the length of day and night is roughly equal and has played an important role in ancient cultures. Many ancient civilizations such as the Maya, the Egyptians and the Sumerians use the equinox to mark the passage of time and predict seasonal changes. For example, the Maya used the equinox to create their calendar, which was based on the cycles of the Sun, the Moon and Venus. The Egyptians also used the equinox to align their pyramids with the stars, such as the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is aligned with the cardinal points and the constellation of Orion. The concept of astronomy as religion is also prevalent in ancient cultures. Many ancient civilizations perceive the stars and planets as deities or omens. The Egyptians had a complex pantheon of gods and goddesses that were associated with the stars and planets. The goddess Nut was associated with the sky and the stars, while the guardrail was associated with the sun. The Maya also had a complex pantheon of gods and goddesses that were associated with the stars and planets. The god Venus, for example, was associated with war and sacrifice. It is possible that ancient civilizations may have had advanced astronomical knowledge, such as the ability to predict eclipses and the existence of a procession of the equinoxes. The procession of the equinoxes is a slow wobble of the Earth's axis, and it takes about 26,000 years to complete one cycle. The ancient Egyptians, Maya and Sumerians were all aware of this phenomenon, and they used it to align their pyramids and temples with the stars. The ancient Chinese and Indians also were aware of it and used it to make their calendars. The stars and planets were depicted in ancient art and architecture in many ways. The Egyptians used the stars and planets in their hieroglyphs, which were used to write their language. The Maya used the stars and planets in their codices, which were books made of bark paper. The Sumerians used the stars and planets in their cuneiform texts, which were inscribed on clay tablets. This art and architecture may have been used to convey religious or spiritual beliefs, such as the idea of the afterlife or the creation of the universe. The image of the stars and planets has evolved over time, and ancient understanding has contributed to our current understanding of the universe. This knowledge was lost for many centuries, but was rediscovered by the Greek philosopher Hipparchus in the second century BCD. Today, we understand that the procession of the equinoxes is caused by the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun on the Earth's equatorial bulge. This knowledge has been used to make more accurate calendars and to study the history of the Earth's rotation. There are several researchers and scholars who have studied the topic of the missing 6,000 years of history after the Great Flood myths. One of the most notable is Zechariah Sitchin, an author and researcher who is best known for his work on the ancient Sumerian civilization. Zechariah Sitchin, in his book The Twelfth Planet, presents a theory that the Sumerians were visited by ancient extraterrestrial beings from a planet called Nibiru, which he claims to be the twelfth planet in our solar system. Sitchin argues that the Sumerians believed that these ancient astronauts, known as the Anunnaki, 
were responsible for creating humanity and teaching them advanced technologies. According to Sitchin, the Anunnaki used genetic engineering to create humans as a slave race to work in the gold mines of South Africa. He also claims that the Sumerians wrote extensively about the Anunnaki and their advanced technology in their cuneiform texts, which he translated into English. Another notable researcher in this field is Graham Hancock, an author and researcher who has written extensively about ancient civilizations and their possible connections to advanced ancient technologies and extraterrestrial influences. Graham Hancock in his book Fingerprints of the Guards, presents the idea that a global cataclysm occurred around 10,000 BC and that it wiped out a highly advanced civilization that existed before the flood myths. He argues that this civilization was responsible for building the megalithic structures found around the world, such as the pyramids in Egypt and the stone circles in England. He also claims that this ancient civilization had a sophisticated understanding of astronomy and mathematics, which they used to align these structures with the stars. He also suggests that the ancient Egyptians and Mayans inherited this knowledge and technology from this advanced civilization, and that their impressive architectural achievements were a result of this legacy. Robert Skark, a geologist and professor, also has studies on this topic. Robert Skark, in his book Voices of the Rocks, presents the idea that the ancient Egyptians had a far more advanced understanding of astronomy and mathematics than previously believed. He argues that the ancient Egyptians were aware of the precession of the equinoxes, which is a slow wobble of the Earth's axis, and that they use this knowledge to align the Great Pyramid of Giza with the stars. He also suggests that the Sphinx in Egypt is much older than previously believed and that it was built by an earlier civilization that existed before the Flood Myths. He claims that the weathering patterns on the Sphinx are consistent with much older age and that it was originally carved to represent a lion, Nada Pharaoh. It's worth noting that the theories put forward by these researchers have been met with skepticism by many mainstream scholars and historians who argue that there is not enough evidence to support these claims and that their interpretations of the evidence are highly speculative. The missing 6,000 years of history between the flood myths and the origins of civilization as we know remains a mystery. But by exploring theories and interpretations of the available evidence, we can gain a deeper understanding of the ancient world and the cultures that existed before recorded history.